This tutorial will walk you through the steps of creating a Blackboard assignment, how students will submit the assignment to Blackboard, and what it will look like from the grading perspective when the work has been submitted. Uh, so first, again, I'm in a Blackboard course, and I'm in the course materials area. Inside the course materials area, I've created a folder called assignments, but again, this folder really, it can be called anything you want. It could be within the weekly folders or um, units, whatever it is that makes sense for your course materials. So inside this folder. Now, when you're creating an assignment, you are going to be focusing on this assessment dropdown. And what we're talking about here is an assignment, a Blackboard assignment, not a Turnitin Direct or McGraw Hill or anything else, just a regular old Blackboard assignment. And just to clarify what an assignment is, this is a little different than the things that are under build content, which are really items that you are posting as the instructor to share with students. An assignment is providing the instructions to students, but really it's a Dropbox for them to upload work to you. So to submit the work um, remotely and electronically so that you can access it through Blackboard, you can take a look at it as the instructor, grade it and provide feedback. So it's a way to collect student work, um, again, through the Blackboard system. So um, this assignment would be whatever the name of the activity is that you're asking them to do. So I'm just going to say final paper, but again, this could be whatever the assignment is. Um, you can provide the instructions in, directly in this box. You could copy and paste them again from some other document you have, or you could say, please see the attached file for instructions. And then using the same method that we did when we were posting content within a Blackboard course, you could browse your computer and post a Word document or a PDF that outlines exactly what the instructions are for this final paper. Okay, so that's where you're telling students what it is they need to do com to complete the work. Um, I would recommend posting a due date if you have one. So we're just going to hypothetically say this is further out. Um, and again, so we're using the same calendar and time options that we did when we talked about restricting um, access to content items. One nice thing is that for assignment due dates, um, we often have them due by the end of the day, which is 11.59 p.m. It's a little bit easier than saying 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. and students getting confused about when they should actually be submitting things. So end of the day, that 11.59 p.m. is a common practice. You do need to have points possible because a Blackboard assignment, when we create this, is connected with a column in your gradebook. You can choose whatever the points are that make sense to you. It could be um, out of one point, either you did it or didn't do it. Um, it could be 10, it could be 100, it could be 25, doesn't really matter. Whatever point value makes sense to you. Under submission details, I do recommend that you open this up and change the number of an attempts on an assignment to unlimited. <clears throat> this means that a student can submit a file to this assignment Dropbox as many times as needed, but you will only need to look at the last one. So see scores attempt using the last graded attempt. And so they may submit three times in the same folder, but you only need to look at the last one and grade the last one um, as the most recent version of that work. If you leave this on single attempt, which is the default, what can happen is that students submit a file and then realize something was missing or they submitted the wrong version or whatever the problem was. And when they go back to fix it and submit the second time, Blackboard does not allow them because they've already used their single attempt. And then that means they're emailing you a file or sending it to you another way and it's hard to keep track of all those those files that have come in. So unlimited attempt is the safest way to collect the information all in one location, regardless of what situations arise, um, and make sure that it's all in that one folder for you instead of having to be scattered in different places. Grading options uh, are typically not needed. Display of grades are typically the default is fine, but if instead of a score you'd prefer to see a percent or letter grade or something else, you can change that from here. You can also choose if you want students to see the grade center column um, or not. And again, everything under display of grades can be changed within the full grade center as well. And you can choose to make this assignment available just like any other content item or decide to make it available but not until a future day using the display after. And then hit submit. So this has now created that uh, assignment Dropbox where students can upload their work. They can see whatever instructions you've posted, but you see this also is underlined, which means this is a link. And so students can click on it and this is what they would typically see. Whatever due date you've posted, however many points it's worth, whatever instructions you've posted for them, 
And then they have the ability to submit the document to you, either by writing a submission, which was actually just writing it right within this box, which usually is not what we recommend. This only works if it's a very, very short submission, like a paragraph or less. Um, and that's usually not the case for most assignments. So usually we tell them not to do write submission, but instead we ask students to submit a file, browsing their computer, finding a Word document, PDF, PowerPoint, whatever it is they're creating, and actually attaching that here they can then write you a message in the comments box and they can hit submit. Okay, so that's how students would then um, submit the work to you. They would find this link within course materials wherever you've posted it and submit the work that way by uploading it to you within the Dropbox they've that you've created. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you one that's been collected. So as an instructor, when you've posted this assignment, the due date has now passed and you're looking to find the work that students have uploaded to you, you don't go to the course materials area where you created this link. This is for students to submit. Where you're going to go is under the control panel, grade center, and needs grading would be the first place that I, I would recommend. Needs grading will show you all of the students' attempts on anything within the course that's gradable. In this case, we're only seeing the one item final paper created by my preview user student, but this would be your students' names. And you can see it'll also show you the number of attempts. So this is the second of two attempts. I could go back and find the first one if I needed to, but Blackboard's great about only showing you the last one, so you don't have to be distracted by those earlier attempts. It'll show you the date that it was submitted and what the due date was. It'll tell you if it's late. So you can see this came in way after the due date. <laughs> um, so you can filter you know, by late assignments, you can filter, filter by student name, by item name, whatever you prefer to make this list useful for your own grading purposes. Now, when you want to actually see the student work, you'll just click right on the student name. This will take you to a screen that shows you the student name, again, attempt two of two, and the actual document that they uploaded. So this is just an example document that I uploaded from my computer. So as a faculty member, I could read through the student's work. I can use the pencil icon here if I wanted to draw on the document. I could also use the little chat bubble here, click on an area of the screen, and add a comment. I can also, to the right, now begin to score the work. So I can click in the box to actually enter a score if I wanted to start grading the work. I can also use this feedback to learner box to leave feedback. And below that also, um, this is the actual file that the student uploaded. So if I did not want to view it in this view within the Blackboard window, but I wanted to download it to my own computer, I could do that. I could click on this link. I could actually click on this download arrow here as well. And that will actually give me a copy of the actual file that the student uploaded to do what I want with on my own computer um, instead of doing it through the Blackboard window here. So there's a whole variety of things you can do with the files, the type of feedback that you can provide. Um, and then this grade uh, would also go directly within the grade column in your full grade center so that students know what their final score was on the assignment. So I'm going to click Submit. So you see this has now come out of my needs grading view because I've now graded it. But in the full grade center here on the left, under grade center, full grade center, I'm going to find the column for this final paper that I created. Oops, I think we've got another final paper in here. Sorry, so uh, this is the final paper assignment that I created. I have two of them in here. That's why that was a little confusing. Uh, but this is the 18 that I just scored for that, my preview user with the 18 in the final paper that I just graded. I can always get back to that. Even if I've already graded the work, I can find the column, find the student I was looking for, and from the drop down arrow, I can see the attempts that the student submitted. So this was the second attempt that I just graded. I can always click on that. And I can get right back to the page where I was with the student's paper, with the feedback that I left, with the feedback I left over here. So I can always go back and edit and change and add more, submit it again, and update what's in the full grade center. Um, so that's how you can retrieve the work after you've graded it the first time. Now what I want to do is show you what it looks like from the student end. So I'm actually going to use the student preview option in the upper right corner of your course. 
This will take me into the course as that K Suborn preview user, which is like a student, and this is the student that I use to submit that work. So from a student perspective, again, in course materials, I had a folder here for assignments, and this was the link to the final paper. So this is where it showed me uh, what I can submit by the due date, the points, and I actually can attach the file. So that's, again, how the student would submit. Now, once I've submitted the work as a student, the students will view their feedback under tools and my grades. So this is how their view of the grade book would look. And you can see this is the final paper assignment. It tells me right away what the due date was, but it also tells me that I submitted a version of that paper on March 2nd and it has been graded. It tells me right here that it was at a score of 18 out of 20. This little blue bubble is what is in the feedback to learner box on the instructor side. So this is where, as a feedback to learner, I wrote good job overall. That's where the student would see that feedback. But for the detailed feedback, students can also click right on this title, final paper. And that will take them to a very, very similar screen to what you were looking at as the instructor side when you were grading the paper. Any of those little drawing annotations, um, this feedback from the instructor little chat bubble box will appear. And then same thing, the feedback to learn here, great job overall, where will appear to the right as well as the final score. So it looks very similar to a student perspective. They just don't have the ability to edit or change anything. They're just viewing what it is that you've provided to them as far as feedback on the assignment. So that's really the steps of creating the assignment and then what it looks like from the student side and how you're grading that work and what it appears, how the students view that feedback within the course as well when you're using Blackboard assignments.